Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another daily Marvel Snap video. Today I have an update on our best full one build to climb to infinite, and I'm actually going to show you guys two different decks, and this first one that's on the screen now is the one that I, I thought, all the way up until today, I thought was the one that I was going to be showcasing, and I've done the most testing on. But it, it hit me today um, of a small kind of tweak or change that I could make that has made a huge difference, and the early preliminary stats look phenomenal. So with the list that is above, I tested it out for 63 games. I logged 63 games. Of those 63 games, I won a total of 96 cubes. I won 42 matches. And so that was a win percentage of 67% over the course of 63 games for an average cube gain of 1.52, which is okay. It's not bad. Um, you're, you're definitely gaining. You're gaining pretty quickly, but you still have to do a lot of different games. And there were some waves where this was much higher, some waves where it was much lower. I noticed that my loss streaks kind of snowballed and ended up in me losing several games in a row. And so the bulk of my 21 losses came in little spurts of like four or five losses in a row in between long stretches of wins. And so 1.52 cubes is pretty decent. It's respectable. And for anyone that might ask, we're currently at 63. We are at the very end of the collection. So we're facing some decently skilled players we're still climbing pretty consistently but the majority of that strong guy the one that's listed above the majority of that deck was used in the mid 50s and we gained 1.52 cubes and so the premise of this deck is that no matter what you draw on those last couple of turns you can always guarantee you trigger your strong guy so you want to curve out your cards early you play some of your lower cost cards your core your rocket your your angela you hold some of the cards like squirrel girl mr sinister depending on what you have in hand and what you've played so if you have kazar strong guy and blue marvel and you know you're going to be able to curve those out on four five and six you can strategically drop your cards knowing what the cost of whatever card you're going to draw into in those next couple of turns will be. And this can trigger Strong Guy very consistently. But the drawback that I started seeing was that you do have to push a lot of your power early. So you don't get that kind of last turn late game surprise power push that can lead to bigger cube gains more consistently. You can surprise the opponent. It's just a little bit harder. You don't get as much value out of your Electra because you have to drop her early because you want to hold your blade and be able to drop that. You have to drop your Angela into a lane early, and so then the opponent can shift their, their play around that. And so what I stumbled upon today was actually dropping Strong Guy entirely. Dropping Strong Guy, dropping Mr. Sinister, and adding in a couple of more one-cost drops. So we added in Yandu and Uwadu, and you could sub Uwadu for a Mantis if you wanted to try and drag into some additional cards from your opponent. Maybe you end up getting their Strong Guy, their Electra, their big resources, but I kind of like the little bit of an advantage that Uwadu sometimes brings by letting us know early if maybe we need to throw some of our cards down into a lane instead of holding them like we normally would. And so with this deck list, you play it very, very slow. The first maybe two, three turns, you're probably going to pass. You're just going to let the opponent start playing their resources onto the board. And the reason you want to do this is so that you can strategically place your power push on those last couple of turns, or really on that last turn, so that you can have as much advantage as possible versus your opponent. And so our ideal play line is maybe dropping Angela on three, on four, dropping a Kazar on five, Blue Marvel, and then curving into dropping six of our one cost drops on turn six to be able to get some insane value and push. This also strategically makes sure that we do not have initiative going into that last turn. So we don't have to worry about our our Ant-Man lane getting popped with an Electra, and, and then we can pop their Ant-Man lane with an Electra, knowing that that's going to swing us an advantage and give us an extra power push. And so the preliminary stats of this deck list are insanely strong. I've played a total of 16 games with this list. In those 16 games, I've gained 43 cubes. Of those 16 games, I won 12 for a 75% win rate, and then for an average cube gain of 2.69. So almost 2.7, almost 3, and that's in rank 60. That's at the end of pool 1. So you're going against more real players, you're going against less bots, and so to be able to gain that many cubes that quickly, that is some really strong early stats. And so I was really excited to kind of showcase this one, but I did want to show you guys the other deck, and I'll leave the deck code for both of them in the description, because both are pretty solid builds. This one, it just gives you that element of surprise on that last turn so that you can position your power more efficiently than the opponent can. 
So that is a brief rundown explanation of the deck list. Let's go ahead and jump into a couple of games and I'll show you how to navigate it. All right, so first up we have AC Man 54321. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if they're a bot or not. And so the first location is Dark Dimension. So we can actually play some of our cards there early. Now, what I like to do is if we draw into Korg, normally we do skip those beginning or early turns, but Korg is one that you're going to get value out of dropping early. So if we can, where we can, I like to drop him because that's going to start clogging up their draw potential. And so if we can force them to draw into a rock, maybe they miss out on, uh, maybe they miss out on their Blue Marvel, their Kazar. We can start getting some upside where we might not have if we didn't drop it. Now, I kind of like the idea of dropping Angela into the Dark Dimension. That's going to make it a sneaky kind of power push or power maneuver that they're not really going to be able to expect. And so they are putting some of their cards out early. So they do an early Electra. And so what I like with this and with this deck list is that we can hold our Electra until the very last turn. That way there is no ifs, ands, or buts about how much value it's gonna to bring to the table. So now that they popped this one, they, they dropped our Korg, we actually have additional turns to push additional resources into that lane where we're not gonna give them that, that same opportunity or, or that same chance. So I'm gonna go ahead and play Rocket just because this is Dark Dimension. Otherwise we would hold Rocket, maybe just play Yondu. That way we can destroy one of their cards. Maybe we end up destroying their Blue Marvel, their Kazar, something really strong, really impactful. Uh, so they're strong guy. They're no longer gonna have that big potential power push to drop on one of those last turns. And now we can secretly drop our Kazar. If we draw in a blue Marvel, perfect. If not, then we probably just pass on turn five. Um, we don't need to rush our power onto the board because we're not pushing anything major or doing anything substantially majorly impactful. Um, and so they have a pretty good lead in Hala. Unless we get something like an Ant-Man, I don't think we even compete for this location. Um, I think we hold our cards for now. We could flood them onto the board, but that, of course, gives them a, a turn to react to where that power is and where that push is going to be. And so by passing, by holding them for now, we're going to be able to place them in a more strategic or kind of surprising position. And so I think Dark Dimension should be one that's no issue. Um, oh, well, we'll go ahead and snap after this turn resolves, but I don't think Dark Dimension is going to be one that is ha that has an issue resolving. And so we're going to go ahead and snap. We have the Angela in this lane to make sure that we have the win condition there. We can do our Squirrel Girl, but that would just be a zero power over here. It would be a two power here. We could do we could do Electra to try to trigger either their Rocket or their or their Nightcrawler. That's if they don't move the Nightcrawler out. We have to remember that they have the potential to move the Nightcrawler. They only have one card in hand. And so let's see. Two power here. This would be um, four power, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11 power here, and we potentially take one of their cards away. I think that gives us a better advantage than dropping into the sewer system where we might not find as much of an impact. So we have so we have a big buildup in Dark Dimension. I think we're going to compete for Hala instead of sewer system. It seems a little counterintuitive, but each of these would end up getting a negative one. And so even though we are, there is only a deficit of three, I think it would be harder to overcome. So let's go ahead and lock this one in. They do play over into the sewer system. They play a Chavez. And so we should have no issues swinging the hollow location. So we destroy their Electra. Our Blade comes in. Our Wadu comes in. They do have a Kazar. But I think between our Kazar, we actually tie the... Ooh, we tie the hollow. No, we we win the hollow location because of Squirrel Girl. Otherwise, we would have tied that location. But Squirrel Girl is going to come in critical in this last turn. And this one might be a bot. But we're going to use this as a way to kind of showcase the late game power push of the deck. And then we will kind of, then we'll build into, we'll, we'll play a few games, we'll skip the ones that are non-impactful, the ones that we think are bots, or maybe just a pretty linear play line that aren't something, you know, extremely valuable to see. And we'll just bring you the highlights. But that does push us to 64. I'll make sure to give you guys a, an update as we continue along, because I want to be as transparent as possible that I'm not trying to be deceptive when I say that this is one of the strongest lists that I have played in pool one. All right, next up we have Mason. And the first location is Savage Land, so that's going to push a couple of a couple of uh, Raptor tokens onto the board. We do have Kazar, we do have Angela, so that tells me I'm probably just going to wait until turn three, and then we'll drop Angela once we know what all of the locations look like. We can drop Angela. We can follow that up with a with a Kazar on four, and maybe we maybe we drop Yondu early. Sometimes I like dropping Yondu early just to be able to potentially pull into one of their key resources. So we are we're going to drop Yondu early. 
We're going to see what it pulls. They put a Mantis in mid, so they could have pulled one of our cards, but instead we're going to take out their Electra. They're not going to be able to destroy one of our one costs anymore. Um, and so the last one is Avengers Compound. We're going to have to play all of our cards here on turn five. And so that tells me that I probably want to play Angela into Xandar. That's the one that is currently open. We can play Nightcrawler as well, just because we can then move him out and buff up our Angela further. So we get a little bit more upside than a standard one cost drop that we want to hold until the end. And so let's go ahead and drop our Nightcrawler. We'll lock that in. We know next turn we're probably going to do Kazar over here. If we draw into Blue Marvel, perfect. If not, maybe we skip on turn five. Ooh, and the Raptor is kind of, or the, the Hulkbuster onto the Raptor is kind of bold, Mason. Um, we can use an Electra to try to target that one. It's a 50-50 split right now. Um, but we could potentially destroy it, which, is, which would be devastating. We could either do Kazar into the Avenger compound lane. Or we can do Kazar into Xandar. That way, they're not going to be able to Enchantress it on turn 5 if they have an Enchantress. It's very rare that a Zoo-style decklist that you're going up against has, has Enchantress, but it could happen. So I think we're going to do Kazar. In that case, in case we do draw into Blue Marvel, we can drop Blue Marvel here. Then we can flood the rest of the board. Um, and so I, I think that's going to be better than stacking both of them in, in the Avengers compound. I like to, where I can, split those ongoing abilities so that there's not a one sole target for them. So they changed the middle location with Scarlet Witch. Ooh, it turns into Muir Island, which gives us more benefit than them. For two turns, it locks into that. And then we do draw into our Electra here. So now we have a choice. Um, do we flood a couple of cards onto the board just in case we draw into our Blue Marvel? Or do we hold them? And in this scenario, this particular scenario, I think what we want to do is drop both our Rocket and our Ant-Man. We know that their Electra is gone. We don't have to worry about them destroying any of our cards. And so we can we can kind of hedge some of our power out onto the board a little bit earlier than we would have otherwise. And knowing that we have the strong advantage in Weir Island, that we have such a strong push on that final turn or final couple of turns, I'm going to go ahead and snap into this power play on five. Then we can fill in the rest of the spaces with either a Squirrel Girl, an Electra, maybe we do a Blue Marvel and a Squirrel Girl. Or if they drop a key resource, we have Electra that if we don't have initiative going into that last turn, then we'll be able to use for whatever they drop. We can kind of preemptively drop it. But with our big power push here, I don't think, I think we're going to have initiative going into this final turn. And so our last card draw is Blade. And so that is, that's, that's fine. Uh, we can do Electra into Muir Island. We can move our Nightcrawler out. That's going to fill up this lane and this lane. And then I think we actually do a, an, a, then I think we actually do an Electra here to destroy their Mantis. If they drop anything here, that takes away five power, and so they're going to have a pretty big issue there. And so they're going to have to try to compete for these two lanes. I think I'm not really sure what list this is that they're running, but I think this is how we go. Uh, my only potential switch would be doing Electra here instead. That way, it could, that way it could possibly destroy this powerful Raptor and give us a better win condition here. But I think we're going to be fine winning in these two lanes. And it, then if they do invest power somewhere else, then we're okay. Let's go ahead and lock this one in. We, we are able to push quite a bit of power onto the board and really control where our cards are and where our power push is going to be. And so they drop a they drop one card into Weir Island, um, which I don't think is going to be enough, um, even if it's a, an Enchantress. I don't think it has the push to take us out of the running. Uh, so Moon Girl is not going to do it. Uh, Sentinel is not going to do it. It looks like maybe they were holding out for a Devil Dino and that just didn't come, but they stayed in to the end anyways. We will take it. We will take it every single time. That is another four. In between last game and this one, we actually had one more human match, but they retreated as soon as we snapped on turn two. Uh, so it was just a one cube game. So I skipped over that one. We're almost to 65. Let's go ahead and jump into uh, one more game. All right, next up we have Raven. And we're not in any rush to drop our cards. So I'm actually gonna pass on the Tinker Workshop turn. If they have a if they have an Angela they, that they end up dropping of their own, then they might accidentally misposition it or they might position it a little bit too early, giving us a little bit of an advantage. Now they do play Ant-Man, which as long as we don't have initiative going into that final turn, we can actually use that information to destroy this Ant-Man, swing that lane pretty heavily in our favor. And especially if we have Blue Marvel, Blue Marvel Kazar, we can get quite a bit of upside from, from that interaction. Let's go ahead and drop Angela into Baxter Building. That's gonna be one of the kind of pivotal locations that we're gonna want to fight for. Uh, Nova Roma does allow us to draw into one additional card, I think we go with a, I think we go with Yondu into the Baxter building 
And that's it. I think we're going to hold the rest. If we draw into our Khazar next turn, that's perfect. We can curve into Khazar really, really, uh, really seamlessly. But if not, then we kind of reassess. We take out their Wolfsbane, which is a big power push that they could have dropped on that final turn. They drop a Mr. Sinister, which is not a great one. Maybe they're running an ongoing deck list. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe we drop Khazar into the Baxter building, but we drop Blue Marvel outside of the Baxter building lane. Um, and then that's going to let us trigger our Angela. It's going to leave one space free going into turn six. So we could either do a Squirrel Girl. We could do an Ant-Man. We actually have two spaces free now because they early dropped their Electra. And so if we do another one cost here, they're I think they're probably going to have an Odin to trigger into the Baxter building lane. And so that tells me they maybe they're going to drop a Gamora here. If this is an Odin deck list and I was them, I would drop a Gamora, a White Tiger here with the intent to drop our Odin here on that final turn. And so in case it is Gamora, I'm actually going to play away from Baxter building this turn. Um, and then we do have a lot of flexibility. We're going to be able to drop six cards on that final turn because all of the rest of their cards in our deck are one cost cards. Um, and so they do. I think this is a bot and I think they absolutely I think they absolutely just obliterated us uh, by reading that we were not going to play into Baxter building. Oh my gosh. But that's okay. That means that we can still more easily push for this lane as a result. If they do an Odin here, that's just going to give them power in one lane versus really swinging this location in their favor. So let's go with an Ant-Man over here. Let's go with a, an Electra. We're going to go with a Squirrel Girl. I think we go with a Rocket into this lane. The, the, last, well, the last slot is going to be filled up by a Squirrel. We can fill up the last slot of this one by Blade. And then we can fill up this one with Uwadu. I don't think this one is going to matter. I don't think we have a win condition here. Maybe. Maybe if we do uh, this plus the Squirrel, maybe we can find the win con. But I think our competitive edge is going to be in Baxter Building and Nova Roma. And so that's the two that we're going to lean into. Might as well snap. Um, we snapped. They had a pretty good read with Gamora. I'm still, I'm still just uh, aghast, uh, taken aback at how good that read was. But now if they do something like White Tiger, they lose a lot of potency. If they do an Odin, they lose some potency. They have an Enchantress as well, which takes out our Blue Marvel, uh, which could do it for them. Uh, that might be enough to take out our advantage in Nova Roma. I don't know. We take out the six power uh, Ant-Man, leaving them at 10. Oh no, we're fine. We're fine. Um, our our Ant-Man's gonna trigger once Squirrel Girl goes off and we should have no issues we have an additional power push with what our with our with our rocket there as well which is going to buff up to five because of the kazar and the rocket's trigger so the enchantress the gamora were great counterplays but it just left them weak in the other locations um and so by spreading out our on reveal by spreading out our ongoing cards we were still able to find the win condition in those two lanes by holding most of our power until that last that last turn that last drop we were able to more strategically position it and surprise them with 17 power into one lane in one turn um, and taking out six of their own. So it's so it's a 23 power push in Nova Roma on that final turn, or I guess power swing or power differential. And then we just continued to elevate our Baxter building location a little bit further. And so with that one, we are going to go ahead and end the video here. Between the two lists that I showcased at the beginning, if you try them out, let me know how it goes and which one you prefer. But as always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.